And in this uh, Stormworks Basics tutorial, we're going to go over uh, stoichiometry and uh, supercharging. And so we're going to continue from where we left off with the uh, module engine tutorial. So let's get started. All right, so I have the uh, no flywheel version of the module engine tutorial here. Um, you can use, you can grab this off the workshop. It's on there. And so let's go ahead and we're going to go in the microcontroller. And so currently what we're doing is we're essentially splitting air and fuel. And so if we look at this, we get a number out of the PID, um, one being the maximum value. We divide it in half, so we have, uh, for a maximum value of one air, we get half fuel. So we're essentially getting 50% of the fuel, then we are air. This will give us a pretty good efficiency, you know, sometimes like 97, 98%. As temperature changes, you're going to need, um, if you want it perfect, if you want uh, to maintain stoichiometry, you need to modulate that. The other thing is, if we use things like a scoop, uh, the faster you move, the more air that packs in. Well, as you pack more air and you want to adjust the fuel, you want to increase the um, the fuel. So, for example, currently this allows us to have a maximum of one air. Um, if we have a scoop or if we have a supercharger, that's going to put more air in. So I've seen numbers as high as like 1.67 air. Well, if we put in 1.67 air, we would need to then have half as much fuel as that. Um, you know, so then you're talking about, you know, uh, 0.5335, something like that. And so we'd also need to modulate the fuel. So what we'll do is we'll take this um, here and let's move it up. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste this from another um, from another build. And we'll go ahead and look through it. So first thing we have here is our composites. We have one, two, and three. Three is, um, three is going to be our temperature for our engine. I believe two is fuel, one is air. Let's just double check that. So if we go out here and we go to logic composite and we hover over the composite node, you'll see here outputs data from the cylinder. Value one, air volume. Value two, fuel volume. Value three, temperature. All right, so let's go ahead and go back in here. And so I connected this before, but we didn't end up using it. So as you can see, it's right here. This is engine. So we're gonna plug the three engine values in here. One like that. And so what that's going to do is that's going to read out the current air volume, the current um, fuel volume, and then the temperature. These are going to go into a formula. It's uh, clamp 0, 0100 uh, times 0, 0, 0.001. And then it goes into this. And this right here is your desired stoichiometry. So generally you want a stoichiometry of 0.2. So you could change that to what you want, but this tends to be what you want. And then we have this formula. Um, again, the easiest way to do this is grab this off of uh, the build. So you can download the workshop and just grab this whole section here. And that will bring that with you. So then you have this formula here. It goes through giving you all the information for the stoichiometry. Then it takes the air volume. It takes the fuel volume. And this one is comparing it for the um, temperature changes. It goes into here. As you can see, we have more formulas. Again, these initially were not my formulas. I can't recall exactly uh, who I got these from, but... Again, there's um, some pretty standard formulas. And then uh, we have AFR sensibility there. As we come up here, um, we want to look here. We're going to feed out one of these to the um, to the air and one of the fuel. So this top one is air. This bottom one is fuel. Then we have, um, I put a property text here just to remind you that X equals the throttle. So you want to put... Uh, your throttle and so in this case what we're using is we're using the p the value from the pid so you plug the value from the pid in there and so what this is going to do is it's going to tell it hey i want you know one air and then it's going to re or it's you know it's going to tell you what you want um for your throttle essentially and then it's going to read the how much air volume you have how much fuel volume you have and temperature it's going to put it through all the formulas and it's going to automatically adjust your um air and fuel so that it maintains it. What this allows you to do is do things like supercharging. Uh, what supercharging is, is often you'll have a belt driven pump and that is putting more air in the cylinder. The more air you pack in there, the more fuel. So again, um, without, without having a supercharger, we can have a max air volume of one going to the air manifold. If we're packing more air into the cylinder, what that's allowing us to do is, um, you know, if we can have a max air volume of 1, that means we can have a max fuel volume of 0.5. Well, if we now have a max um, air volume of uh, 1.5, 
Well, then we can have a max fuel volume of 0.75. This allows us to make more power with a smaller engine. All right. And so by plugging this in, again, all you have to do really is copy this, plug it in, and then your um, air and your fuel go in there. That brings us up our stoichiometry. All right. And so let's go ahead and we will update this. All right, and so that takes care of the um, stoichiometry. So let's go ahead and start the engine. She probably won't see too much difference here. Again, it's normally aspirated, meaning that it's just uh, drying air, and normally it's not having forced air. Let's go ahead and start it. All right, so you're really not going to be able to tell too much what it's doing um, until we put a blower on there. All right, so it runs pretty normally. Now, when this comes into usage. So let's actually do something here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's see. I'm going to do a clutch here. Let me uh, put on, let me do an auto clutch essentially. So let's go ahead and I, you know, I haven't done an auto clutch for this yet, but uh, let's go ahead and we'll do a quick auto clutch. And so really all you want with an auto clutch is you kind of decide what is your you know, where is your minimum value for RPS that you want to start adding the clutch? And so, you know, I, I reverse engineer all this stuff for my operation of real life vehicles. You know, I, I uh, drive a tractor trailer. And so they're a lot more complex. They're non-synchronous. You have to synchronize the gearbox. You have to manually match your revolutions in order to mesh gears. So it gives you a kind of a little bit of, over, uh, of insight in how a transmission works. So to do an automatic clutch here, um, essentially, so... The, you know, a lot of people are still quite mystified what a clutch does. A clutch allows you to incrementally add power to a system. And so I'll bring up a clutch GIF here of um, how that works. And uh, I think this is a little bit of an easier way to kind of figure it out. So let me find a good GIF here. All right, so here are some good, um, some good GIFs of clutches. So let me see if I can find. There was one that I had before that was good. So here's a, oh, here it is right here. Okay, this is the one I like. Let me see if I can open this in a new tab and not have it be tiny. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so I wish I could pause this, but um, if you look, so right here, this this is turning from your engine. So your engine starts and that's always gonna go. So if you think about it, when you're at a stoplight, the engine's still spinning, it's idling. It's just not passing power to the wheels. And so what you do is you have a clutch. now. You know, unfortunately, most people will never experience a clutch now as everything's going automatics and then elect electrical vehicles. But so essentially what you have here is you have this conical disc and this uh, this uh, reddish area here, that's simulating like it's that's a high friction material, kind of like sandpaper. So that's a, fr a high friction material. And so you see the shape of this. It's kind of conical. And this has a, um, a concave um, interior that matches this. And so what happens is... You have a spring here, and so that um, makes so that when you let off of the clutch, it's engaged. And so your foot is actually pushing against the spring, and it's pulling the um, – it's, it's making sure the power comes doesn't go from the engine to the wheels. And so if we look at this uh, little green part right here, you'll see when they, when they apply the clutch, it starts to spin this. And so what that's doing is the engine's turning. When this comes in – it allows some form of, some amount of slipping so you can slip some and then when these come together the friction is passed through here this disc rotates and it turns the bottom section so let me see if i can get it running without um so you can see here here a couple more so this one has more conventional clutch plates as the plates are pushed together it passes the power through here's uh the other one and it actually shows you here see how the green is not running this one is actually good i can pause this so let's go ahead. So again, there's the engine's turning. Uh, look at this part here. When this joins, this will start spinning. And you'll notice this green part here starts spinning. There it goes. And you're passing the power through. All right. So some more. Let me see if I can get some more clutch picks here. This is a, you know, kind of what a car clutch looks more like here. You have uh, your clutch plates. This is your flywheel here. So as you can see, this is uh, a high friction material. As you um, turn, as you move the pedal, it's going to push that high friction material against this flywheel, allowing power to pass through. And so you don't want power to pass through until 
you have a high enough RPS so that the engine doesn't stall. Now the engine needs a certain amount of essentially RPS for it to have self-sustaining power. If the compression goes too low, you need a certain amount of compression in order for the cylinder to, for ignition essentially. And without that compression, the engine will stall. And so like, for example, if you don't rev up the engine and you just let go of the clutch, it will jerk the car forward and it will stall the engine. If you rev up and gently apply the clutch, it will have enough torque to both be able to sustain the rotation of the engine and to start to move the vehicle. So you need to rev up in order to do that. And so what I'll do here is I do an auto clutch generally. And so what I'll do is if, so I pick on, I generally pick a number. So right now, let's see where our idle is. Our idle is four. Okay, so if our idle is four, I'll put, if our RPS is greater than, I'm gonna put a number, we'll put five. So if our RPS is greater than five, we wanna increase the clutch, all right? If our RPS is less than five, we wanna decrease the clutch. And so what I do is a not. And so essentially if our RPS is not greater than five, i.e. less than five, we decrease the clutch. And this is called feathering your clutch. So as you're starting to, especially like say I was pulling two trailers and they're very heavy. I would start to rev up my engine, gently let out the clutch, and I would let it start to slip a little. So some of the power is staying in reserve for the engine to have compression. Some of the power is going through to actually turn the wheels. And I start to, as I increase my revs even more, I can start to let out the clutch more and give it more power because as I um, put more load on the engine because I'm trying to pull more weight, um, I also need to increase the revs. And so what this is called is feathering. So you'll actually, if you watch somebody's foot, it will go in and out, 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 out. And so it will uh, give more and more power. And so that's all based on RPM. You don't, or RPS in this case, you don't want to stall the engine. You need essentially minimum RPS to do it. And so this sets it up. So we have a minimum RPS of five for power application. And this will allow us to feather clutch in and out. So we'll uh, enable this. Now, one thing we can do is sometimes you can go clutch of zero. Sometimes you can go, um, you can, so there's kind of a dead zone. There's a 0 0.3 dead zone there. We can try that with a 0.3, the 0.3 to one. We can do that. Um, increment is point, let's try zero one. I can't recall usually what I use, but we can tune that in. And that's how fast the clutch goes in. So if you're stalling, you're putting your clutch in too fast. If you're, um, you know, it, you know, you also have to be careful of how quickly you're taking it out. So this is the auto clutch portion of this. So also went into that. So let's go ahead and we'll test out the auto clutch portion. All right, and so let's go ahead and hook up our clutch. Clutch is connected. All right, that's all connected. All right, so we should see the wheel turn now. So let's spawn this. All right, so let's go ahead and start the engine and... Okay, so it added the clutch already so that's probably because that point three is too high I generally don't put that point three in there so as a test of my own part so I generally put a zero in there because I want zero clutch application the problem is we do have a little bit of a dead zone but you have a dead zone in real life too all right so see how the the wheel is not turning now let me start revving it up and that gently starts to add in clutch so that's all an auto clutch does. Again, I, I linked in, my, in the last video my auto clutch tutorial. That's pretty much all that was. Then as I brake, now if you think about it, if you came to a stop, right, um, you don't want, you know, when you're at, stopped at a light and you have a uh, car with a clutch, you push the clutch all the way in when you come to a stop. And so you want zero clutch when you're stopped. And so this is essentially what that auto clutch is doing. As you can see, zero clutch pressure, all right? And so we we went ahead and did a did an auto clutch there. All right, so let's go back in the microcontroller. So again, I'll go over this really quick again. So you take the RPS, you go to a greater than. And so what you're essentially doing is saying, hey, I need a bunch of torque. And the way you make torque is by revving up your engine. Again, uh, uh, you know, you're take, essentially getting the force. Torque is essentially, think of it as force. Uh, force equals mass times acceleration. So you have the, the engine weighs is something, that's the mass the acceleration is how fast you turn it, the RPS. So the higher the RPS, the higher the torque you're going to make. And so, you know, my idle is four. So um, that makes it so that when I'm sitting at idle, 
the clutch is not connected. As I give it power to move, it starts to add more clutch incrementally. Uh, you don't want to, you know, some people will do it as a numerical switch box and just turn the clutch to one. You don't do that. It's called dropping the clutch. You can stall your vehicle. You can spin your tires. In real life, you would do a ton of damage to the transmission. You don't want to do that. You know, in, uh, in, you know, when I'm driving a tractor trailer, the only time I use the clutch is starting and stopping. I actually do all my shifts without the clutch, and that's because, you know, I have enough knowledge of how the engine operates, how the clutch operates, how the gearbox operates, that I don't need the clutch because I can manually match the the revolutions with my with the accelerator, and I can put you know match up all the gears. But uh, so this is what, how the auto clutch works. All right, so let's get this set up for. Um, let's go ahead and get this set up for. Uh, some stoichiometry here, or for a uh, for a supercharger rather. So we have the stoichiometric equations in there. Let's update that. Now there's a couple ways to do this. I generally will do this power after the um, clutch. Uh, when you're sitting at idle, when you're freewheeling, what freewheeling means is you shouldn't be freewheeling. Freewheeling, but essentially what freewheeling is when you're rolling without uh, use of you should always have the clutch engaged, let's put it that way, until you come to a stop. You shouldn't be rolling down a hill with your foot all the way to the floor. Um, you should be using engine braking. You want the resistance of the engine to help slow you down, all this. Um, so really, you don't need the supercharger when you're just sitting there idled. And you actually probably don't want it because it's going to cause you to burn more fuel. You only need the supercharging when you're actually in motion. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut right here. And let me, I'll change the color here. Uh, we'll make it this green here. And so we'll make all of our supercharging components green just to make it a little bit easier to see. All right, and so what I tend to use is, tend to use an impeller, a small one. And some people will gear this. I tend not to. Um, I think you tend to, you tend to cap out on air volume and you don't really need it. So again, you want to check this. The yellow is torque. As you can see, RPS power. And so generally when I'm putting this down, kind of a little tip with impeller, when you put the impeller on top of the pipe, if you rotate it 180 degrees like that, that will generally put the torque down. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this like that. And let's look which... Um, so this here is fluid out. And this here is fluid in. So this is your air coming in. It's going to be sped up and essentially compressed with this impeller. The fluid is going to come out, and then it's going to go into your air manifold. All right. And so what I'll do is I'll copy this air filter. That will go on the fluid in. And then I'm actually going to move my um, air manifold. All right. And let's turn it sideways. Let's put it right here. Again, you want the shortest run you can have. The further the, this is the more likely you'll have some loss. So you want to go as short as you can. And so this here will go like that. And so now we have it, uh, the torque from the engine. When we start to move, it will start to rotate this impeller. It will pack more air in here. And more air will come in there. And so we should be able to get our number of our air manifold higher than one. All right, when we can get our air manifold higher than one, the engine will read that. Remember, we have the engine composite. It will send that information to the microcontroller and say, hey, air is above one. Give me more fuel. Because we can burn more fuel, we can make more power. So this engine will be more powerful uh, than without the supercharger. All right, let's spawn it. Now, sometimes we need a bypass. Sometimes we don't. So generally, we don't. So as you can see, what I mean by a bypass, sometimes you have to bypass it um, to let air around, but it's getting enough air to idle. So if you look, we're currently at 0.149. This was capping out at 1 before. Let's jump in here. I might have to change something to the microcontroller anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and push this all the way forward. All right, so now we have it trimmed. So it's going to be trimmed at full throttle. All right, so our wheel's turning. Let's look at our impeller. So you see our impeller is pumping air. Our impeller is moving at 16.7 RPS. It's pushing more air in the cylinder. All right, so the engine is getting more air now. All right, and so this is allowing us to get more um, air volume in there. Now, why is this not at one? Well, this isn't at one because um, I, I'm only telling the engine I want 20 RPS, so it's limiting it. All right, 
So as you can see, we're so let's look at our numbers really quick. So what I'm going to do next is let's pull this back in the workbench. All right, and so I'm trying to see. I'm not sure if a torque gauge will work for this. Let's let's try it. Um, it tends to give a static torque, but let me go ahead and we'll try running a little test here. This will be more powerful. This will allow us to pack more air and more fuel in. All right, so I'm going to put a torque meter here. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call in the the workshop one. So right here is the no flywheel workshop. So this, again, this was from the last video. This is available in the workshop. You can download this, and then after this video, you'll be able to download this one as well. All right, so now they're both in. Oh, let me actually edit something on this one. So let's add a torque gauge on this. So we'll see if this changes. Sometimes... The torque gauges don't really work in game as they do in real life. They're static, uh, but sometimes you can get them to run right. So let me see. We will see if this actually uh, makes a difference for us. You know, this, the superchargers definitely make more power, but you have to, you know, testing them sometimes can be challenging because you have to get the the right circumstances to demonstrate it. All right, so th that's up. That's at eighteen point seven one. That's running. Let's look at our torque here. Uh, torque is showing 11. Actually, it's not going to read because I don't have an auto clutch on there. So let's uh, go ahead and put an auto clutch on this one. So without an auto clutch, it's not going to run. So let me see. All right, let's grab that auto clutch. Let's stick it on here. That's why I ended up having to do the auto clutch was to be able to read it. I'll right, we'll plug our clutch in there. We'll go ahead and we'll plug our RPS to there. All right, and let's go ahead and start it. All right, so that's turning the wheel now. Let's read our, our torque. So that's showing 15.2. Let's read it off this one. Let that one rev all the way out. 15.3, so this one's higher. Let's double check the other one. 15.2, as you can see, this one's reading 15.3. Now, you, the other thing you need to understand here is this one has more resistance. Remember, the power of the engine is also turning the impeller. So this one here is doing more work and is giving us more power. So you notice the RPS is 16.71. You know, this RPS should be higher. 17.38. So this one's giving us lower power at a higher RPS. This one is giving us more power at a lower RPS. Now the reason why this one is at a lower RPS is because we have the added resistance of the impeller. This one doesn't have that resistance of the impeller, but it has to produce higher RPS in order to make less power. And that's because this is forcing more air in here. And because we're getting more air, we can put more fuel in. And because we're getting more fuel, we're getting more power essentially. So let's read this, 0.44 air. Let's read this one over here. And where is it? It's over here. That's at 0.35 air, all right? So we're able to pack more air in. So this is at 0.35 air. Now we remember, in this simple one, we're only multiplying it by uh, 0.5. So that should be, what's that, 15, 17.5 about for fuel? Yep. And let's see what this one is. 0.35. So as you notice, this one we're able to burn more fuel, making more power. All right, and so that's essentially what supercharging is. It allows you to take a smaller motor and make more power. All right, now you know I wish we had turbos in games. We don't. Turbos, you're essentially using the exhaust pressure, so you take the airflow off the exhaust. So you'd use the six liters per second to turn an impeller and turn. The torque is essentially running this backwards. We can't do that. I wish they'd add it, but they didn't. So as you notice, we're able to burn considerably more fuel in this. Now, is that a benefit? I would say yes, and the reason is this. You can make a smaller, more compact engine. So you want to make a little race car, and you want to be able to put the engine in the, a small engine in there. You can do that with supercharging. If not, you have to build a larger engine in order to get that power. So again, we get more power at lower RPS because we're able to burn more fuel, because we're able to pack more air in there. Again, 
17.38 RPS here. We have 15.2 torque. Over here we have 15.3 torque at a lower RPS. All right. So uh, one thing you do have to worry about with these is these will produce more heat. Again, you're burning more fuel. Burning fuel is what makes heat. And so you have to consider that. So you might need a more robust cooling system. But what this allows you to do is have a, um, a smaller, more compact engine that can produce more power because you're able to cram more air in. Now, there's a bunch of things we could do. One thing I do is let me quickly show you the Mac Pinnacle um, tutorial or the Mac Pinnacle um, uh, transmission. So let's cut that out. I just want to save this really quick. So let's save this. This is going to be on the workshop. This will be the. Um, I know I didn't spell it right. Um, supercharger. All right, supercharger. All right, and so save that, and then I'm going to open up the. Um, so this is the transmission for the Mac Pinnacle that I made. This is a realistic 10-speed um, truck transmission. It's within 0.02 of the real gear ratios of the real engine. Now, notice I don't gear up my turbo. This is where my supercharger would go, or supercharger in real life would be turbo. So you might hear me call it turbo, but I mean supercharger. Um, some people will gear that up. That's fine. You can, you can often pump some more air if you gear it up. Just remember, the more things you the more gearing you do essentially what you're doing is you're trading rps for torque um you know you're using up some of the engine's power to make uh more rps so you you have to trade one for the other you have to trade rps for torque vice versa and so if you want to put a bunch of gearboxes and then your impeller that's fine but you need to realize you're also putting resistance on your engine so you so i tend to just um not gear them up at all um, of course you can, you know, you can play with it. You can get better numbers. You can do a lot of testing, but you know, in game generally, do I need that much power? No, I don't. Um, but so that's kind of a quick little explanation of, um, stoichiometry, how to set it up. Um, that model will be on the workshop. You can go ahead and download that and, um, you can just grab those formulas off of there and then you're able to supercharge. I also went through the auto clutch tutorial. As you see, it's super simple, super easy. Um, the other, um, you know, so that will automatically work. Let me just uh, quickly we'll do an overview, and I'll actually show you the micros for that. As one little wrap up here. So as you can see, auto clutch is pretty simple. You're taking your RPS. You're saying, hey, is it greater than a little bit higher than your idle? So if your idle is three, maybe make it four. And so all that's saying is, hey, I want to make sure my torque's high enough. Um, so I generally idle around four. I start to add power application at 5. This automatically takes care of the clutch. So if the RPS is greater than 5, it starts to increase your clutch pressure. If it's not, it starts to decrease your clutch pressure. So if you're putting your clutch in too fast, you're stalling, it will automatically reduce your um, clutch. It helps you not stall. That will automatically take care of your clutch. That's super simple. Again, all I would do here is if you copy all these, that will allow you to plug them in. All you have to do is plug in the engine node. The engine composite to one, two, and three. That's for air, fuel, and um, temperature. And then right here, it tells you what you need to do. X equals throttle. So you want to hook your throttle, which in this case, we'll use a PID. So we'll take the PID. We'll plug it into the X's. Top is air. Bottom is fuel. And now this will automatically vary your uh, fuel and your air mixtures. It will also do it for temperature. So as the engine heats up, it will automatically change your air and fuel to maintain a stoichiometry of 0.2 or whatever you set it at. So I hope you guys found that interesting and informative, and we'll see you in the next one.